I'm gonna try to give you a helpful video and talk about how I set up my cameras in my kayaks. Cameras in kayaks, that's gonna be the theme of this video, obviously. I got a few kayaks out here, I got a few different camera mounts. I'm gonna show you how I put my mounts together. First off, what do you want to film and how hard do you want to put effort into filming? And that's part of mounting your kayaks. The easiest way to put a chest mount on. You know, you can wear a chest mount, and I've done it when I'm kayak fishing. You get a pretty good angle. A lot of people use a head mount, and I've never really worn a head mount, and I haven't really enjoyed it. But you can get really good angles and good shots looking down when fish are fighting, or you can lean over and, and see a fish in the water. You get this really good view of that. Maybe you get a really good topwater view if, if you're fishing to the side. But like me, um, I don't really want to wear one. And also I'm always looking around. So a lot of times I'm looking around. Plus I, I move my head around a lot and I don't want to be focused on pointing the camera at that. So I'll wear a chest camera every once in a while. And sometimes as a backup, I have a chest camera as like my secondary camera. But let's talk about the main camera you're going to have. You're going to, and I like to have one camera running nonstop. When I'm out kayaking, even get, even as soon as I get my kayak out of the truck, I put a camera on and I turn it on. I want it running for as much stuff as I can get. We'll go over what camera and like battery packs and like how I set it up in a minute. But first off, you got to find a place. If you're like me, I got to find a place where you can run your camera nonstop, but it's not gonna bother you. You don't have to think about it, especially when I'm going to do kayak tournaments and or if I'm out fishing or if I'm floating a river. I don't want to be thinking about my camera. I want it to run and I want to enjoy the moment. I want to be able to handle the fish, catch the fish, move around, do what I want. So I want a camera that's catching as much as I can catch with some decent audio and I can just let it run. So almost all my videos, I have a camera behind me and you get that shot over the shoulder. Sometimes it's different, maybe a different size. You maybe pick which shoulder you want. Um, you get from about here on the kayak up if you angle it right, you also get the views. Uh, and also, it's more stable. The way I mount it, it's more stable. It's not shaking. Right and it's turning with the kayak. So sometimes, if I'm topwater fishing, maybe you don't get the, the blow up because maybe my head's blocking it. Or if it's off to the side. But I get a lot of different things that happen. In anything around here, you're getting all of that. And with the view, uh, especially because I'm like when I'm going down rivers and stuff, you're you're getting the kayak going down the river, and it's staying stable with the it turns with the kayak, it goes up and down with the kayak. So I want a camera about arms reach behind me, where I can turn it on and off if I need to. But usually I'm going to turn it on and leave it running, and I'll I'll go over the other stuff in a minute. So that's how I set it up. So I like to build them out of PVC. PVC is pretty cheap unless you're getting a ton of it and easy to work with and it's very like stable so as the thinner you get the more wobbly it's going to get but i like to start out with an inch and a quarter this right here is a coupling and then we're reducing down to three quarter inch so you can go to lowe's or a, a plumbing place and you know find the pieces you need kind of go piece them together and then here i got a 45 and just a piece coming off and what i need to do though is cap this and seal it where it floats if it does fall in, but I haven't done that yet. This is a newer one that I made. And I have a mount on here. I'm not sure where it came from. Uh, some kind of mount off Amazon. I'll try to put the link, but it's very easy and it's, it's very, it's held up very well. It's got two ball bearings right here to where you can move this, you know, thing all around different places, different angles and kind of get it set where you want to get it set. Of course, I have a GoPro on here. You can make these up all different types of ways. I have two different ones and they're for two different kayaks. But um, the easiest one, to, if you have an old town, what's awesome is the uh, the rod holder, the rear rod holder. There's one, they're forward and they're backwards. An uh, inch and a quarter fits perfectly into it and fits really snug. If you see some people's kayak mounts, they, they, they shake all over. If you've watched my videos and, I, and I'm in this kayak, this thing is very solid. Fits perfectly into either one. So I have it behind me. I have this on a, you know, an adjustable angle. I line it up, make sure it's shooting where I want it, and uh, turn it on. Very simple. So inch and a quarter, reduce down to three quarter. You can you can not reduce it. You can do whatever. But the inch and a quarter fits perfectly into the old town 
um, rod holders, at least the PDL 120. So that was the easiest way to do it. I stick it in there and it's good to go. If I go under a tree, you know, I just pull it out, put it back in, make sure I line it up and I'm good to go. Now my other three kayaks besides the Old Town don't have a rear rod mount, but I still wanted something simple, easy to manage and I can take it out and I can kind of take it with me from kayak to kayak. I have five kayaks total and this setup right here actually works on all five of them. It's the, verse, it's the most uh, universal and it's easy to take around, especially if you already have a crate and that's, how, that's like what you like to take. If I'm doing a kayak tournament, I take my big crate but and then you can get mounts for that but other than that i'm taking usually this now it's very basic and small i gotta paint it again i painted it gray but I, I put something on the back here i'll show you that in just a minute but you know you put your crate in you strap it down this one on the bona fide makes it real easy to strap it down oh. i hook it in there and you put a little stuff in there but that's that's pretty solid it's not going anywhere i built a little adapter piece and it's also inch and a quarter so this one's a little bit different I've made it a different angle to it so I put it in there boom it's in it's got a little angle here's my mount facing forward now the bonafide sits um, the crate sits a little bit further back than some of the other ones so you might have to adjust this I can't I can barely reach it but um, you kind of adjust it or you can turn it out if you want it out pointing sideways Maybe you want it pointed behind you, um, or if you want it just straight up and pointing down, it's very easy to make this out of PVC. So I got an inch and a quarter. This was going down to one inch, down, down to three quarter. I just wanted to be as rigid as possible and be strong. You know, if I slap trees or whatever, it's not going to hurt, but also at the same time, I can reach back, pull it out if I need to take it out. This is an idea I felt like it turned out really good. I really loved how this one turned out. So um, obviously a regular milk crate. And then you can tell this is just one of those um, three piece rod holders you can get from anywhere. Real cheap. Now what I did was I mounted it to a piece of wood. You don't have to do that, but I, I just wanted something real solid for it to mount on. And I probably would change that up if I was gonna redo it because that wood adds a little bit of weight to it. Um, not much, but just a little. Now, I still use inch and a quarter, so I took a piece of inch and a quarter PVC and it slides right into that rod holder. Um, pretty, it's not, it's not totally snug, but it's, it's, you know, pretty good fit. And if I wanted to put my camera in there, I could put it in there. I could just set it like that, but it's going to move around. So I wanted to make it a little bit more stable. So I took that piece, stuck it in right here. And then I put two screws going across, two, two bolts. They're actually coming through and coming out here. I, bolt, I just drilled through it, put two um, bolts with nuts on it. And then I glued on a uh, coupling, an inch and a quarter inch coupling. This is a T, but I just put a, a quarter inch coupling on there. And that right there is solid, not going anywhere, doesn't weigh anything. If I, if I want to use this, I can still stick a rod in there if I don't want to put the camera or a mount in there. But I can take this with me anywhere. And um, this is the one that I use for this because it has a little bit more of an angle coming back. So put it in there, boom, my camera is on. If I wanted to go with something taller, I could go with the one that's straight. I could put it in there. And then it's up above me looking down. Or And I can always adjust where my camera is on there. So. Um, you know, just mess around. I just painted them gray to kind of blend in uh, to make it look a little bit better, which I'm going to go back and paint some of this. Let me show you my front camera mount and then we'll talk about how I set them up to try to get the best audio and video. Now, the whole reason to film on my camera is to show you, and I want to get footage that people enjoy watching. I don't want just garbage footage, and there's a lot of ways to do that, and then what I'm, what I'm doing may not be the best, but it's the best that I really enjoy. I would I'm always trying to, you know, tweak it, get a little bit of better footage. And it'd be really nice to be able to mount, uh, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollar camera, but that's not practical. I'm mounting a GoPro, which does pretty good video. It ain't the best. It ain't, this camera here is like a $600 camera. It gets a whole lot better footage. But sometimes I found a way to get some 
footage with my phone that I enjoy, but also you can also switch it out with a GoPro, whichever one I feel like using. So this turned out to be a really easy way to have my front camera, but also not have it in the way. I got a Yak Attack rod mount with a couple of couplings. I don't even remember every piece. There's several pieces. Uh, I think we made an adapter because I wanted it at least as tall as my head. And um, it's got an arm right there, where, or an adjuster where you can kind of turn it up and down. And it's got a couple ball bearings or joints right here where I can face it to me. And it's pretty much even with my head. I can, I can show a fish right here. It's far enough away where you can feel, you can grasp it and also get a good, uh, I guess, representation of how big that fish is. Because sometimes when you see it over the shoulder, it's hard to tell. But right here, this is, I like this angle. Now, I, you could run a camera right there, but, you know, it would be in the way. And when I'm fishing, I don't want to be held back. Or maybe I'm fishing like this and I want to set the hook. Or I make a cast and I hit it. So, I do my video. And maybe I talk to the camera, do an intro, or kind of show my fish. Turn it off, you know, turn it off, lower it back down, and I'm right back to fishing, and it's on a good solid mount. So that's a, I don't know all the pieces, but it's a yak attack pieces that you can get these arms and mounts for. Now, something I've been doing that I, I kind of like, and with my phone, I'm getting really, really good footage. Also, I can see how well the fish shows up on my, my GoPro. I have a screen here, but I don't use it that much. I can put this phone piece on there, and I can, you know, throw my phone on there, have it mounted right there where I can take a good video. I can take photos. Um, as long as I'm not doing like, you know, running waters, usually I'm fine. If I'm in somewhere calm and I don't want to drop my phone in, you can have a tether on it if you want to. But I'll, uh, I'll change that out every once in a while and just, I'm like, all right, I'm going to, I want to get really good footage. So I'm going to use my phone and that's going to be the best, you know, quality footage you can get. With you can tell what the lighting looks like. Is the fish showing up? All the colors of the fish showing up. So um, don't lose your phone, but you can change out this mount for a phone mount. And um, I'm, I'm really liking the way that looks. And then my third and fourth things are going to be underwater footage and releasing the fish. Now, most of the time, I am going to hold my phone. If, I, if I'm using the GoPro, I'm just going to take my phone and I'm going to hold the fish here and just get a release video of it swimming off into the water. A lot of times when they swim off, they do a backflip or jump. I've gotten really a lot of really cool action by videoing the fish as I release it. But I just do a quick cut to it, nothing real long. So the back camera's on, I catch the fish, pop up this camera, look at this fish, you know, turn this one on, let's release the fish. And you get to see the whole, everything with the fish, you know, cut up into quick little segments. Also, underwater footage. So sometimes I'll bring a camera for underwater footage and, um, I'll just have a, another GoPro or something, or sometimes use this one, and I, you can, you know, pop this off, like, all right, and I'm gonna get an underwater release. Or I have a GoPro on a stick that I try to get underwater. It's kind of hard sometimes to get underwater release because you're trying not to lean over, so that can be a little difficult, but remember, the whole point of videoing is to show the people that are watching, they wanna be, feel like they're there and enjoy it, and everybody's making noise out here today. Now I mainly use GoPros, and this is a GoPro 10. I have a 9, a 10, and 11. This right here is a DJI Osmo 3. It's actually really good. Um, we'll talk about some stuff. And this right here is a new camera that, that was sent to me, Akaso uh, 7, I believe it is. And for the price, it's really good quality. I don't like the audio as much, but I did something. Uh, it has a good wide angle, it has stability, and I did some underwater footage and it turned out really good. So there's there's several cameras and kind of, they're all different. Like I like this one because how fast you can uh, attach it or detach it. It's a magnetic and it clips right on. So if this one's on something, you have to, uh, you know, take the screw out. But if it's like this, you can just take the battery out. But if it's like this, which I like to do, this is my favorite way to do it, is in a GoPro housing. It goes into the GoPro housing and it's sealed up. So if I run it without a battery charger, I have to take the whole thing off, take it out, change the battery. If I run it in here, I like this because it has a directional mic and it does good with the wind. So if it's, this is what I run behind me, pretty much 99% of the time. 
I run it like this in this housing and it picks up really good audio. So if this is behind me, if a fish splashes, it sounds really good. If I'm talking and just, and even if I'm facing that way, it picks me up um, twice as good as without that. If I look and talk at it, it, it picks up really good. If I'm pointing, this is pointing to the road, you hear a lot of car noises. But if you're out in the woods, it picks up birds and sounds like that really good. Some people like to wear a microphone and I have, I've been collecting a lot of stuff. I don't use it all, but I'm trying to like find the best things. I don't know if I've used this, but once. This is a DJI wireless microphones. You can clip them on you and that's all it is. That's the microphone right there. Uh, this little thing charges it and you, you plug the receiver in to the uh, camera or you can use this just to record audio. And I've used those with recording with people. So a guy's got a camera, say he's 100 yards, you know, 100 feet away. I'm talking, another guy over there's talking. You, you're getting all of our audio really clear. Uh, I don't think it picks up like the ambient noises as well, which sometimes I'm trying to get, not, I don't just want my audio. Like you wear a microphone, something, it picks up your audio really good. It picks up your voice really well, but it'll, it'll try to block everything else out. If you run the, the DJI uh, or the uh, GoPro outside of the housing, the audio is pretty good it picks up noises from all over so instead of it being in that directional where it mainly picks up in front of me it can pick up noise from there but it doesn't pick up you know i have to be kind of closer to it to get my voice to override especially if there's other noises going on so that, that's a, you know there's a plus and minus for that if i'm going somewhere where i think there's a possibility of me flipping like i did recently i didn't put the housing on i just took the gopro with you know in the waterproof case that it comes in with you know the little battery door on it and when i flipped all my audio or all my video was fine my gopro was fine because it got soaked underwater which doesn't hurt it if i had this on there it would have ruined this gopro and I, in the footage may have gotten ruined too you know it may probably could have messed up the housing and everything so there's certain times you use certain since you you know certain things and that's all depending on what you're getting into there's a lot of different battery packs um, this is off Amazon. A lot of stuff I just get on Amazon. It's cheap, like Chinese stuff, but I don't have to put a lot of money into it to test it out. You, and then you, sometimes you can find better brands. This right here has a, the GoPro adapters where you can mount it on my mount. They put the GoPro on top of it, run a wire, and charge it all day. Also, you can get uh, lights, same way. Ooh, that's bright. If you, want, if you use it a lot at night, you can have a light where it's shining. And if you're fishing in dark, it gets a pretty good view, at least picks up something. You can run a battery pack to your um, GoPro, or you can run, like now they have the big battery boxes that have, you know, USB ports, where you can have a whole battery box down here, run a wire up to your GoPro to run it the whole time. Now, I think to be really good, you have to start paying attention to the little bitty details. Is my camera shaking? Is it crooked all the time? Um, the new GoPros have really good stability. And uh, if they shake, you don't you already know it. So like it's not gonna be shaking the whole time. Or if you're if you're going down, I've gone you know going down rapids, and it looks very firm because it's on a firm mount and it's got built-in stability. If you're using an old GoPro or an old uh, old one of those, you hear a lot more noises. And what drives me crazy is really bad audio, and that's what drives most people crazy. If you're not if you're if you're if you feel like you're doing really good videos and something's off just pay attention to all the little ticks and bangs and noises and those are the little ones if you're using like a gopro hero 5 and older and you have an amount you're gonna hear a lot of noises through the housing they're just they weren't very good uh up to like i think seven they got a little better eight was better than once like nine ten eleven it's amazing you don't hardly get any of that noise through there if you're holding it and you know hearing all that ticking noises, the newer GoPros do way better job of that. And I know it's more money, but you, you're gonna have to spend money to make better videos. And I'm telling myself that I, I keep trying to, you know, cheap out on different things. I always think I'm gonna make these short videos, and they turn into a whole lot longer than they are. If you have any questions or comments, I'll try to answer them. If it's something I can answer, if the comment on how I can make my stuff better or a suggestion you have for me, hey, I would love to see this view or this view. It may be something I've already thought of and I just, it's too much hassle. It may be something that doesn't work that well. 
or maybe something I'm like, you know what, that would actually improve my videos because I'm always looking to improve. And the best way to do it is have several cameras running where you're getting all angles, but that takes, for me, that takes so much more time to edit. And then there's ways of you can have your, your GoPro, you know, shut off and on and on loop time. I don't like to run loop time. I like to run it just nonstop. I get all that footage. Now it takes a little bit longer to go through, but I feel like I don't miss any little thing. A lot of times I go back and review my footage and I see things I didn't even know happened. Or I thought I was gonna cut something out and you know, I'm like, you know what? I'm glad I didn't cut that out because that turned into something that maybe it's something you said turns into something that actually happens or a lot of things. So I like to get as much footage as I can get. You know, if I can get underwater footage, if I can drone, or if I can get shots uh, with my phone, try to be as steel as I can, try not to rush through things. Take as much time and effort you can put into making and videoing everything you can video. That way you can cut out whatever you don't want to use, but you're gonna get some really good stuff to use.